morning. It's a great pleasure and uh, honor to be with you. As you can see, my title is Missing Link in Soil Management. I'm going to actually, maybe a little bit background. I, I'm a soil agronomist by training, and I have 34 years of experience in applied research in soil water and plant relationship. And I'm very much inter interested in the plant ecology. I've done lots of work for almost 30 years on humic substances. They are new era of the organic matters that they actually that's a new dimensions or new chapter in soil science. Hopefully briefly I'll talk. This is a new area. I've done lots of research on it and I go all over the world. I was just in Russia, came back and from there I went to Cyprus. So now whole world is talking about soil organic matter. Hopefully I'll be able to talk about some of those. Uh, today what we are going to do is Understanding missing link in our soil, soil plant water relations, briefly, I'll bring those. Organic matter versus humus. Humus is the stable part of the soil. That's how it takes thousands of years for it to stay in soil particles. I'll just distinguish between organic matter and stable humus. pH and nutrient availability fertilizer use efficiency, and another thing I call growing soil practices, how we can make our soils much more sustainable. If I ask you, our soils are made of, how many have heard of caliche? Good. Our soils are made of this, calcium carbonate. It makes 10,000 years for this, that mother nature through weathering microbes work on it, make a soil, if I get a pound of that from your garden, your lawn, your, your farm, and I'm just gonna explain my experience last 34 years. I reviewed over, I can say more than 30,000 soil analysis with Western Farms, Simplot, farmer, ranchers, and horti urban horticulture. And I can probably will summarize those in probably five major factors, see how we need to understand those missing links. When I was actually World Congress, and in a, we were in Europe World Congress on plant production, Jacques, actually from Farm Agriculture Organization, talked about this. I want to actually emphasize that since we are talking about sustainability. He said by 2050, the world population will double. Crop production needs to be double. Soil organic matter has declined drastically all over the world. Actually, I will talk not all soil organic matter, but stable humus. The part of humus, it takes thousands of for, uh, years for soil, which clay minerals interact with organic matter, stays stable. We mostly lost that, I'll talk about that. We need to become more smarter, maximizing our resources. I appreciate Pete had a very good introduction about that. Uh, Alan gave an excellent outline of the plant ecology. And I had the actual honor of working with American scientists who knows Alan, uh, Dr. Harrington, in desertification in Iran about almost 30 years, 38 years ago. So I'll briefly talk about that. There was general consensus that water quantity and quality are declining. Soils are becoming salt effective and diseased. Crop production is increasing. We have to create an innovative soil plant nutrient mat. I will today, it's a very complex area. After I talk missing link, I'll talk about the humic substances, that this is a new era from Leonardite, which is 300 million years old ore. We make actually organic acids, actually good ones, there are lots of snake oils, but good ones they make. That one liter of concentration of this 
is equal for, from functionality standpoint, equals for four ton of the compost. Doesn't mean compost is bad. But this is the point that now, I've done lots of research with agricultural people, so research actually internationally I'm involved, but we are seeing amazing impacts out of stable organic matters that hopefully I'll talk a little bit about that. So with that, again as I said, soil is a living system. I call soil as an impulse of intelligence really. When you walk at it, I think we need to pray for it because you know better than I do, you know. It gives us the land to live, it gives us the soil to plant, grow the crops, feed our children, make a school on it, whatever you want. And you can read that better than I do. The U.S. loses more than two billion tons of topsoil each year through the erosion. I love the FDR, President Roosevelt said that the history of every nation eventually written in the way in which it cares for the soil. That's what the President Roosevelt told. I love that statement. Now I go start explaining this missing link. If you have a soil and you're growing crop, trees, shrubs, whatever, as you know, we have some macro and micronutrient that nitrogen, phosphor, potash, calcium, magnesium, potassium, micronutrient, zinc, and iron. But if I get a pond of the soil, and we analyze, this is the soil from the farmer's field, actually 45% of that is a mineral matter. The rest are the porosity, pores, the small pores. We call them micropores or macropores. So, the small amount of that is organic matter, but that small amount of organic matter dominate the whole health of that soil. Okay, if I ask you, you think how many percent of that crop, any crop we grow, wheat, barley, sugar beet, triticale, apple, pear, blueberry, raspberry, banana, you think anything we grow, the final product that we harvest, we analyze that. How many percent of that is carbon, hydrogen, oxygen? Any idea? This is a new, actually, dimension in soil management. They talk in Germany. Hopefully, I'll talk to you. Keep that in your mind. Think about it. So I'm saying is anything you grow, you think final product that you have. We analyze that. How many percent of that is carbon, hydrogen, oxygen? When you're thinking that, I'll bring it up and show you. Okay, missing link. And when we have high calcium, you think what happens you have high calcium? pH is high, is that right? More than seven. pH of seven is neutral. Most of the plants like pH of six and a half and seven and a half, because most of the nutrients are available, I'll show you. When pH is high, you have a high calcium. What it will do, you think? It ties your phosphor, it ties your zinc, it ties your iron. Is that right? And plus, when the pH is high, besides that, when pH is high, as I said, when you go above seven, there are some other physical and chemical and biological characteristics. Hopefully in my talk, I'll talk that, that will happen. You Now you're keeping in this in your mind. If we have high calcium, okay, what it will do, it will tie our phosphor, it will tie our iron and zinc. In the summer, you can walk anywhere you want, and I can see in the ministry, I can see since the BNCAL cap, most of the trees are showing zinc and iron deficiency. But most of the guys, and go apply what? You think you apply zinc and iron in a granular form, it will work? It has to be chelated or it has to be in a form or more available to the plants. So, then again, lots of people go with this. How many of you heard that people go in this area by gypsum and apply to soil? So you think that's the right thing to do? Absolutely not. 
absolutely. You can deport me. I'll give my head because it's totally wrong. And I know lots of people. I know lots of in consulting we're doing because gypsum is calcium sulfate. When you have in soil something we call base saturation, I don't want to confuse you on it. It's like if you have a glass, this they call it, this is our soil base saturation, 65, 80% of it is a calcium. Okay? 10 to 20, 5 to 10% is probably magnesium, 3 to 6% is, a, no, I'm sorry, the uh, magnesium, and the rest is the potassium. Okay? And the less than 3% should be salt. When, then we, when we have a high alkali soil, majority of this base saturation is saturated by calcium. So there is no space in this glass for others. Then you add gypsum, what happened? You add more calcium, time more phosphor, more zinc, more iron. So instead of that, you think what we can do? Anybody? Any idea? Any answer? Elemental sulfur. When you put elemental sulfur with some organic matter, it won't work by itself, I'll talk. Elemental sulfur, bacteria will change that to sulfate. Sulfate grab your calcium, makes calcium sulfate, which is gypsum. So you naturally make gypsum in soil and stuff adding. So those are lots of missing link people really do. In this area, again, they say, another thing is with the phosphor. There's something we have a phosphor index. Most of the fertilizer you have, generally not made in this area, because generally when you have a high phosphor, a high calcium, you need to put more phosphor. I'll talk about that. But if you have organic matter, there are lots of soil, uh, phosphorus, potassium in the soil, but they are tied up. By adding good organic matter, you'll be able to flaculate and open that, make it more exchangeable. I'll talk about that. So again, I sum up. So we have high calcium. Oh. Ties our phosphor, zinc. Iron, and again, there is a ratio between calcium and magnesium. When you have a high calcium, calcium magnesium ratio should be 6 to 1 to 12 to 1. Mean whatever you are doing in your cultural practice, you have a greenhouse for farming, be sure keep that ratio by adding a little magnesium. Like in, even um, I was reading in medical science, the same. They give you calcium, they don't give you magnesium. It won't be translocated, it won't be absorbed. So those are some ratio we'll talk at. Then I will talk organic matter, organic matter, organic matter. That is a foundation of everything will make things work in the soil. If you look at the research, they say, the efficiency of plants by removing fertilizers. Look at that. Nitrogen is between 40 to 50 percent. It's not that. Phosphorus, 10. I don't know. It's not showing the bottom. 10 to 34 percent. Potassium is 40 to 60 percent maximum. And most of the high numbers are like a nitrogen. We say like a 40 actually uh, to 60 percent. The highest number are the one microbes make it. When you have good population of good organic matter, microbes use carbon and their energy. When they populate any organic residue, they change that to nitrate, nitrogen, and ammonium nitrogen. We call mineralization. Mean that's the most efficient. Less salt index, the most. In sustainability, that is the name of the game. So when you have good organic matter, not only soil is healthy, know you have good aeration, you have aerobic situation, aerobic fungi, bacteria, protozoa work on it, and then they mineralize, mean make whatever you have, leaves fall, grass falls, you're in the fall, you put organic residues, microbes change that to a very efficient form of the nitrate, nitrogen, and ammonium nitrogen. So this is a dilemma. I have done lots of work with farmers. We were able to almost double the efficiency of their phosphor, and nitrogen, and potassium, the same. But by understanding the simple factorials. All right. We already talked about understanding southern hydrosol. There's high calcium. I mentioned that. 
you look at our soils, we have pleachy layers sometimes in 10, 15 inches. Sometimes we go actually probably 40, 50 inches done. Well, generally, if this is your soil, this is called a doff layer, organic matter. We don't have as much organic matter. But we will be able to manipulate by adding good compost with less salt, good green manure crops, and, and other things that I will talk, humic substances, that good quality organic acids that made of linerdite that's 30 million years old, the microbes work 30 million years on woods, shrubs, cellulose, and the cellulose all change to matter that you can use condition your soil. 